Welcome to this class on the topic of the payback method. This is on part of the subject matter of investment appraisal. And it's one of the techniques that uh, is commonly used. It's the simplest, probably, technique that there is. The method calculates the time taken for the investment project to pay for itself. So we're just simply looking at a stream of returns in the future we add them all up and when it pays for itself that gives you the, the period of time. So the investment project will generate this stream of profits over its lifetime and these are used to calculate the time taken for the project to pay for itself. So it's a very straightforward method. The payback method assumes that the future stream of benefits, the profits, arising out of the investment project are known with certainty. Now, that could be a problem because we don't know the future, we don't know what the future stream of profits will be, nothing is certain. So uh, it's making a big assumption that we know what the future stream of profits will be. And that's not necessarily a realistic assumption by a long stretch. Uh, this is, it's unrealistic and it's also unreasonable. The best we can achieve, generally speaking, is an estimate of the future profit stream. We can't say for definite what it will be. Let's look at an example. Um, here we have a firm that's contemplating an investment project of let's say £100,000 and let's say it expects a stream of profits of £20,000 every year from the project. So very very straightforward. Now let's work out the payback method on this one. Well the payback period in this case is 100,000 divided by 20,000. We get 20,000 pounds every year. So 100,000 pounds divided by 20,000 pounds is five years. This means that the project will pay for itself in five years time. Very, very straightforward. Take a different example. Suppose that a firm is contemplating an investment project that cost again 100,000 pounds and that it expects the following profit streams. Well, uh, this is what it expects in the future. I'll put the cursor on the screen. Here's the, um, the years. So right now it's minus 100,000. That's the impact of the investment. In the first year, it gets 10,000. In the second year, it gets 10,000. In the third year, it's expecting 12,000. Fourth year, 12,000. Fifth year, 16,000. So the easiest way to do this is to work out the accumulated stream. So it's 10 plus 10, which is 20, which is 20, plus 12, which is 32, plus 12, which is 44, plus 16, which is 60, and so on. And you can actually work out the, the implications for the investment of this. We started by buying the piece of equipment, let's say, for £100,000. After one year, we've made 10, 10,000 pounds has come back to us. So now it's 90,000 in the red, if you like. 80,000, 68, 54, 38. It's 20,000 pounds in the red. So at the end of year six, it still hasn't paid for itself. It's still 20,000 pounds under uh, what is required to, for it to pay for itself. At the end of the seventh year, it's still 1,000 pounds short. Um, so, and at the end of the eighth year, it's um, it's four thousand pounds in in profit. So, it will take this period of time for it to uh, pay for itself. And there it is. Um, so. At the end of eight years, the project is paid for. That's the payback period, eight years, and it's now gone into profit. Presumably, you'd have to keep the asset for much longer than eight years to make a profit on it, which was the whole idea in purchasing the asset in the first place. Let's look at some advantages and disadvantages of the technique. Well, first of all, it's very easy. It's very easy to understand. It's a very, very straightforward method. It does ignore the sequence of payments. Big returns early may be put to work for the business. Perhaps purchase further investment projects or 
put it in the bank and get a rate of interest. The same returns later will not yield these benefits. In other words, if there are big returns early in the life of the asset, that's better than having the, the same returns later in life. We much prefer uh, our, our return soon rather than later. Say a project costs £5,000 and we have two pay possible payback streams. Um, put the cursor back on the screen. Okay, we've got £1,000 for the first four years here. And we've got £2,000, £1,200, 500 and 500 for the first four years here. Which one, which of these streams is preferable? Uh, no contest really. Stream 2. Because we get more of the, the money back, more of the investment resource back in the first two years. And that is much more preferable. So even though the, the two of them have the same payback period, we can discriminate in this way. We can pick the one which has got the best uh, payback in the early period. So in both cases, the payback, there are six years. However, stream two is preferred because the returns are received earlier. Okay, back to the advantages and disadvantages again. Uh, it concentrates on early returns that are probably easier to forecast and are more accurate. Uh, the payback method does emphasize the near future as opposed to the distant future. And that means it's, it's minimizing risk. It's uh, attempting to minimize risk. It wants to return sooner rather than later. It favours a short payback, but this means it could, of course, ignore very lucrative or very profitable returns much later in the project. So it depends really on the nature of the asset and the market and what's happening in the market. Um, each case has to be dealt with on its own merits. This is just a technique, one technique in the complete arsenal of the investor in, in the the weaponry of the investor. It's one technique that could be used, but it's a powerful one. By concentrating on the early returns, this technique is most suitable in situations where liquidity is important. Obviously, getting the money back, getting the investment money back early will improve cash flow. And remember that a business must pay its bills day to day. So that's uh, that is important. Let's look at another example. Oh, it's a question really. But say a firm has to choose between three projects, A, B and C, and each will cost, let's say the same, 100,000. The stream of returns are given in the following table. So we're, we're given this table and asked which of these projects uh, should the, the business consider? The project A, B, C, D or none? Well, Applying the payback method, which one gives the, the money back? Which one pays for itself soonest? Um, that's pretty obvious looking at the table that Project A returns the, the cash quickest in two years. B would have to go to three years and uh, C would actually be 60, 90, hmm four years for C. So A is the answer. Um, let's say we have a stream. Um, sorry, the second one here is, is uh, the second question here is related to the, the first one. It just says, which project is the second most preferred project? Unusual question. It's looking for the second best. We know what this, the best is. The best is A. Now we want to know what the second best is. Uh, the answer is B. It has a payback period less than three years. Um, because in three years it gets 115,000. In the same period C would have a payback of 90,000. So B is the second best. So in terms of rankings, A is the best, B is the second best, and C is the, the worst. Here's a slightly more complex question. 
according to the payback method which of the following projects is most preferred now in this case the projects cost five thousand eight thousand and three thousand so there are different costs of, of purchasing these machines or these pieces of capital equipment or whatever it is and here's the return on each of them so which one is the most preferred well let's just tot it up um, the first one we're looking for 5,000 returns, so that's two, four, it's four years. The second one's 8,000, so that's three, five, eight. Okay, the first one was two, four, five, so that comes in in four years. This one comes in in four years. The next one is 3,000, which is uh, two, one is three that's four years so each of them have the same payback so the answer here is <coughs> there's no unique solution here um, all three projects have a payback of four years so we need more information here we need more uh, something else an extra criteria to to try and deal with this one of course we've already got that in, in some respects we just discussed it earlier uh, it looks pretty good because you get more of the return in the early time periods. So you don't get anything for Project B in the first year, nothing for Project C in the first year, but with A you get 2,000. That's good. Helps cash flow, brings cash back into the business, partly pays for itself. So A would be preferred if we look at the the revenue stream if we look at the the way the, the revenue stream is composed that's just simply trying to get the, the cash back into the business as soon as possible but if we were not to take that into account if we if we didn't look at that then all the projects are the same four years but a, a real business person i guess would, would go for for a a is the answer but technically the payback is is none Okay, that's our uh, our discussion of the payback method, our introduction to the payback method. Very simple, very straightforward. And that concludes the class. So, thank you for watching.